Today I'm going to show you two easiest ways to finish necklines and armholes using a cover stitch. Both methods are suitable for beginners. They should be used with both necks and armholes that won't gape as they don't gather the fabric. They're a good alternative to narrow hem or bias binding finish. I have used McCall's 7313 pattern in both examples. The fabric is flimsy, it's viscose jersey, so pressing is important to set the stitches in. The first method is sewn flat and it's great for complete beginners or if you are making children's garments as they, they are small and can be fiddly. The second is sewn in the round and it's definitely my preferred method but it might be slightly more difficult or it might need a bit more practice but both methods are very very easy and suitable for beginners. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We're going to start with the flat cover stitching method. Our body pieces, front and back, are joined at the shoulder. The other shoulder seam is still open. We're going to cover stitch the neckline first, then sew the other shoulder seam, then cover stitch the armholes and Finally, sew the side seams. The fabric I use here is viscose jersey. It's quite flimsy. I use my overlocker for the construction. You can use your domestic sewing machine if you prefer. We're going to cover stitch the neckline. Fold the neckline under about one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. We're going to cover stitch close to the edge. It's best if all your needles are penetrating two layers of fabric at all times. I'm using three needles cover stitch here. You can use two needles if you prefer. And as always, I'm using my thumb to make sure that the fabric is flat, the edge is not rolling up. The neckline is done, now we're going to sew the other shoulder seam. Some slight candling is acceptable in this viscose jersey because you are going to press the seams to set the stitches in. Pressing is very important. If you have any excess of fabric, you can always trim it later, don't worry about it. And now we are going to sew the other shoulder seam. We are joining the other shoulder seam. I'm doing it on my overlocker. You can do it on your domestic machine using a stretch stitch. I'm just trimming my threads. I'm going to bury the thread, the tail of the overlocking in the seam as I sew. I'm going to show you another method in a minute. But here, I'm pulling the tail towards me and I'm burying it within the seam. The tail is buried in the seam. You can uh, sew a couple of hand stitches to make the seam allowance flat. I'll do it later on my sewing machine. Just a couple of stitches here would work. Now we are going to 
Put the stitch the armholes. Again, turn the fabric under by one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. We're going to cover stitch close to the edge. In flimsy fabric, it's actually better to have about one millimeter of excess to your left as the fabric is pulled by the needles. I don't do it because I don't trim after cover stitching, so I habitually cover the edges, but the result would be better. Also in here, I'm going to put the needles first because I want to start close to the edge, but I want to make sure that the feed dogs are still moving my fabric as I cover stitch. Sorry. So needles first, then foot down, and then I cover stitch close to the edge. And one armhole is done, we're going to do precisely the same thing with the other one. And it looks like that. Of course it is going to be pressed, it is going to be ironed. We need to set the stitches in. needle first, then fit down and then sew. Both armholes are now finished. We can join the side seams on my overlocker or if you are using your domestic sewing machine on your sewing machine. But that's done. That's well, it looks like that. We're going to sew the side seams. Of course, right sides together. And I'm going to show you the other way of burying the tail of the thread of the overlocker. And it happens to me sometimes when I forget that I am supposed to put the, the tail of the overlocking in the seam. I'll show you how, how I forget. So let's say that I pull the thread, but I place it somewhere that doesn't cover the seam. So it doesn't go into the seam. It's too far. See? So it's not buried. But it's not a problem. We're going to use a hand needle, a huge needle, and bury the thread like that. And you can use this method in general if you prefer. You just bury your tail by hand. It only takes a few seconds. And it's done and it looks quite neat. Of course, the seam allowances should be stitched down either with hand stitches or, in my case, with the machine stitches. Just a couple of stitches is enough. And now the other side seam and our bodice is going to be done. But in here, I'm going to bury the, the thread using my normal method. Pull 
pull the thread in, bury it in the seam allowances, and cut the rest off. And it's done. So our bodice is ready. I need a few stitches to make sure that the seam allowances are flat, not popping out. But that's it. I've got limited space here. I can't really show you very well. But it's done, it's finished. And the most important thing is now we need to press it, press it properly. We're going to use the other method. In here the bodice is already constructed. So the shoulder seams are sewn together and the side seams are sewn together. I hand basted the seam allowances for my cover stitching because I don't really like the clips. I don't use clips in normal, my ordinary sewing. In here we're going to cover stitch everything in the round. We're going to cover stitch the neckline in the round and then the armholes in the round, which might be slightly more difficult, but if you go slowly, it's actually easier. And this is definitely, definitely my preferred method. I don't really use the flat method. Again, we are cover stitching close to the edge. I'm using only my foot as a guide. And for me, hand basting is better because nothing is distorted. It's easier to operate the fabric. But of course, you can pin, you can do whatever you want. Because we're doing it in the round, we're going to try and go over the first stitches with my last stitch. This fabric is also viscose jersey. It is quite flimsy, but it's okay. I can remove the basting stitches now. For me, this is actually faster, but everybody prefers their own way. And the neckline without the basting stitches looks like that. All is covered. Don't worry if you have excess, you can always trim it a little bit. And now we are going to cover stitch the armholes again in the round. I tend to start about one, two centimeters before my shoulder seam or before any seam. And again, go over the first stitch with your last stitches and finish the cover stitch. And we're nearly there. There is only one armhole to do. And we've removed basting stitches. <laughs> Without the basting stitches, it looks like that. And yes, we will have to press it as well. Everything needs to be pressed. Pressing is very important, but everything is covered. And finally, <laughs> the other armhole. Because we're cover stitching the curve, it's good to go a bit slower. 
It's good to be a bit more careful. I have done it before. So I might be a bit faster, but, but go slowly. You can't go wrong if you go slowly. And finishing, so the last stitches over the first stitches, finishing the cover stitch. And our bodice is done. This is the easiest, the fastest method that you could think of. I don't use it very often, but it's good to use it from time to time. And it, it's very satisfying when you can make something that quickly because the bodice now is done. <laughs> Thank you.